Hello, friends. So, as, as a part of a snippets review, um, I'll just go through a small little snippet on uh, what is the key IDSA guidelines that have come. So, I request all our trainees to go through these 2024 IDSA guidelines for all the MDR infections. So, today, maybe next two to three minutes, I'll just talk about what does the guideline say without going in or dwelling into the detailing, which I'll do a separate video on. So what is the key IDSA recommendations with regards to treatment of Acinetobacter baumeni? Because uh, most of the ICUs uh, in India, we would be dealing with this wretched bug, which is uh, particularly resistant to carbapenem, which we call it as CRAP, carbapenem resistant Acinetobacter. So the options are very few in India. So we need to have some clarity if we have crab in our ICU, what is it that we should be using as per IDSA? Uh, so this, this particular guidelines came in 2024, as you see. So I think it is good that we refer to this as one of the reference document when we are using antibiotics. So the suggestion from IDSA for any acinetobacters that we deal is there should be a sulbactam. So that is the message that we cannot possibly as if you had to adhere to IDSA, we cannot give only uh, cholestine or cholestine with carbapenems. It has to be always sulbactam in combination with something else. So the suggestion or the recommendation is to use sulbactam, durlobactam, along with imipenem, silastin or miropenem. So this is the combination that is put as suggestion or recommendation. So the reason I wouldn't be talking too much on sulbactam, durlobactam is it is unavailable in India. Uh, so there was a nice trial that was done called an attack trial. Uh, this was, I will talk about it in detail maybe when I do a detailed presentation on crab. So the attack trial uh, that came in 2023 in Lancet, they compared sulbactam, durlobactam along with imipenem, silastin with and compared it with cholestine with imipenem and silastin and they found that uh, sulbactam and durlobactam was non-inferior to the cholestine combination and uh, there were some signals suggesting that sulbactam durlobactam may be a little more better so that's why this has come as a suggestion or recommendation from idsa that we have to use sulbactam durlobactam along with imipenem or miropenem since Sulbactam, Durlobactam, as of now, is unavailable in India. We have to look at other options. So the other options is one has to consider high dose ampicillin sulbactam. So when we say high dose ampicillin sulbactam, the recommendation is any sulbactam that we use should be more than six grams. And studies have shown it is effective in vitro and has shown to have better clinical outcomes when sulbactam is added to the combination. So generally, ampicillin sulbactam is available in 2, two is to 1 sort of a ratio. So if ampicillin is 1 gram, sulbactam will be, uh, if ampicillin is 2 gram, sulbactam will be 1 gram. If ampicillin is 1 gram, sulbactam will be 500 milligrams. So that's the combination that is available. Now in India, we have sulbactam as an isolated molecule also that is present. So whatever you use, it has to be more than 6 grams. And up to 9 grams is what has been suggested. So if you look into the evidence, there are seven trials. In fact, in the seven trials, this combination of sulbactam uh, with any other combination not necessarily has shown a dramatic improvement in the clinical outcome, out of which only one, which was a prospective cohort study, which was published by Greek authors. That is, one, that is the only one which has shown some sort of a benefit when you use combination of sulbactam with other combinations. So now the question is, what sort of a combinations that you can use with ampicillin sulbactam, it has to be always used with combination. Or if you do not want to use ampicillin, there are sulbactam available in India. You can use sulbactam in combination with certain recommended drugs. So the, the drugs that has to be considered to be used in combination is cholestine with polymyxin, or it can be used with minocycline. So I will talk a bit on detailing of all this, uh, maybe when I uh, cover it in an elaborate way. And sulbactam could be uh, combined with piggy cycling. But uh, in the literature from the IDSA, the weightage is given more to minocycline combination when compared to piggy cycling. So you can combine sulbactam with cholestine or polymyxin, sulbactam with minocycline, sulbactam with piggy cycling, or sulbactam with cefiderocol. And even cefiderocol 
is unavailable in India. So it, uh, we are told that it will be soon available. Even if you are using cefiteracol for acinetobacter, so the suggestion is it has to be combined. So any drug that you use for acinetobacter has to have sulbactam in combination with any of these drugs is what has come out in IDSA. And IDSA 2024 suggests that phosphomycin combinations and rifampicin combination not to be used because earlier we would talk about these also. So now there is a suggestion that phosphomycin combination or rifampicin combination should not be used. How about uh, maybe previously we used to use high dose polystine with carbapenem so as a combination for acinetobacter. So there were two large RCTs where they have shown this high dose extended infusion of carbapenems along with polystine, which we were traditionally using for acinetobacter, did not show any benefit. So now the whole ethos is to add sulbactam mandatorily for any acinetobacter that we are treating, even carbapenem with polystine, which we were using as a high dose polystine up to 9 million units along with carbapenems as a desperate measure for acinetobacter. These two studies have shown no clinical benefit. Now the norm is that we should use sulbactam with the combinations that I mentioned. So sulbactam with polystine, sulbactam with minocycline or sulbactam with tigi cycline, but between tigi and mino, mino is more desirable or more weightage given or with septeracol. How about inhaled sort of an antibiotics like inhaled the cholestin, but I don't know this, I may be a little critical. So there are these two studies uh, based on which uh, the IDSA says that inhaled antibiotics also is not recommended. But when you look into this COLF study, IASIS trial, here they used uh, inhalation with amikacin and phosphomycin and there they did not show any benefit. So with regards to cholestin, you have a lot of literature coming from Greece which has shown some benefit. But if you have to stick to IDSA as a norm, so IDSA says there is no recommendation or role for using inhaled antibiotics for acinetobacter because studies, the two studies that are quoted here did not show any benefit. So this is about the IDSA guidelines for acinetobacter. The take-home message is if you have acinetobacter, VAP or acinetobacter, UTI or whatever in ICU, please use sul combination of sulbactam with four of those drugs that I have uh, put in place, which is suggested by IDSA. And the traditional one which we are using, that carbapenem with polystine as a confusion, is de-emphasized and uh, the suggestion is not to use that in isolation. There has to be a sulbactam that needs to be added. So thank you, friends. I will talk a bit about details of all those studies in maybe a next video, which will be a longer one. This is just a snippet video. So request you all to submit valuable work to a journal of acute care and you can visit my website to read it. Thank you. Thank you.